All right. Hi. On the second weekend in February each year, Pflugerville Public Library hosts romance authors for a fun-filled afternoon of book signings, author interviews, crafts, and games. Anyone 18 and up is welcome to attend. This is our 14th annual Romance Reader Social. I'm Meg Miller, an adult services librarian, and with me, I have these wonderful authors to chat romance with. So to start, I have Regina Morris, who by day Regina works in the world of IT, computers, logic, and reasoning, but by night and weekend, she puts pen to paper and writes sensual love stories that will keep you reading past midnight. Regina is fueled by chocolate and tea, which allows her to spend all her free time writing. She writes sensual vampire romances as well as contemporary romances about humans. She and her husband live in the heart of Texas in their two-story red brick dream house. Their home has plenty of air conditioning, carpet, and pillows for the comfort of their spoiled Sheltie puppies who never leave Regina's side. Their adult children have left the nest but are still in Texas and only a short drive away. Writing is so much easier now that she has is an empty nester and she does her best to write and keep in touch with the fans. S. Bolanos, a genderqueer author, S, whose pronouns are she, they, enjoys creating worlds that feel as real as they are fantastical and doesn't shy away from the darkness that makes the light so much brighter. Her passion for fantasy and the supernatural has given rise to stories where the mystery is just as riveting as the romance. S is of Cuban-American descent, born in Miami, Florida, raised in Mobile, Alabama. They currently live in Texas a startling eight miles from everywhere, as everything, as the saying goes. Their two Labradors keep them company, whether they want the company or not, and their supportive husband is invaluable when it comes to working out sticky plot points. Their characters are lively, well-rounded, and reflect the conflicts we all face, albeit with a supernatural twist. Readers can look forward to many stories within the same universe that reach into the past and stretch all the way into the future. Tracy Wolf is a New York Times, USA Today, and international best-selling author, as well as a lover of vampires, dragons, and all things that go bump in the night. A one-time English professor, she now devotes all her time to writing dark and romantic stories with tortured heroes and kick-butt heroines. She has written all of her 60-plus novels from her home in Austin, Texas, which she shares with her family and three dogs. Cecilia Renee is a creative, happy, and outgoing Detroit native who majored in broadcast communications at Grambling State University. Immediately following her graduation, she started her new life in New York City. As a self-proclaimed New Yorker, her stimulating and diverse career in advertising sparked a drive for hard work and dedication. Her love and passion for writing followed her from childhood through adulthood, where she wrote short stories, poems, and screenplays. Always an avid reader, she stumbled across a book that ignited a deeper need for more and joined a fandom of like-minded individuals. Cecilia and her family made a huge move five years ago to the great state of Texas, where she currently lives with her loving husband, wonderful son, and spoiled fur baby, Sadie. Cecilia Renee loves romance, humor, and all things spicy. For this reason, she will always give you a happily ever after. <laughs> Welcome to our Romance Readers panel, everyone. Okay, so I will um, go ahead and start out with the questions. And I do like to go ahead and like kind of call on folks for questions. Watching all of these panels over the last couple of years, it's so hard sometimes to know like when to go next. Um, so for the first couple of questions that are for everybody, um, we'll just kind of go uh, probably I'll call one person and then the next and then the third and we'll just keep going that way. We are going to start with Cecilia Renee, who is one of our four featured authors this year. Um, we're filming this at a separate time, so we want to make sure we get this in. Um, welcome to you. And so we read everyone's bios, and uh, we just want to talk about, you know, everyone's path is different. So what's your writing journey kind of been like? Who? Um... My writing journey, I've always written, like always. And... Um, since I was really little, my daddy bought me a typewriter <laughs> um, and I was so excited and I started typing all these stories on this typewriter. Um, so many stories that I wrote. One little novel um, titled uh, Ghetto Love um, that circulated uh, the middle school <laughs> and ended up in the principal's office. And the principal was like, where'd you learn to write about sex? This is ninth grade. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I got TV. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> um, so uh, that was like my first book. To this day, one of my friends, she still goes, man, I really wish I could read Ghetto Love again. I'm like, I don't know where that is. <laughs> Who knows where that is? So I did as I wrote when I was younger and then um, I joined the newspapers and stuff like that. And then when I went to college, I was like, I'm going to be a reporter. Like I was like dead set. Like I'm not going to write. I'm not going to be I'm not going to be a newspaper reporter. I'm going to be on TV. Like I went through all this stuff. And then so I went the television production route um, and became a producer and all that but i um, always wrote in the background poetry and stuff and then um a few years back i um started writing twilight fan fiction and just being a part of that community and writing nonstop. and um then i wrote the bachelor duke and everybody was like publish it publish it publish it i was like i'm gonna publish it but i had to do a complete rewrite everything and um then I got my first book, The Bachelor Duke, which I, I don't have any books next to me, but I got that. You've got the picture book behind you too, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's book two behind me, book one fell, and it's over there, but yes, book two's behind me. <laughs> and then book three will be over there. It comes out um, in a few months, a couple months. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, then The Bachelor Duke came out, and it was just, and it's just been, selling and people have been reading it and liking it and it's a really cute story um uh, really sweet and um some places sweet some places steamy because um, i don't write sweet too much but um but sweet as in like he's like in love with her right away and it's kind of like um he doesn't want to be he's kind of kind of upset about it uh but yeah so yeah so i've always written and i love 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 to write love 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 to write and i've always loved it and and that's how I. That's awesome. And so you talked about the Twilight fan fiction. What was it that inspired you to write romance? Is it kind of that and exploring there, or I mean, you talked about Get a Love, so it's been since the inception. Yeah, <laughs> Get a Love. I love it. No, oh, to write somebody game somewhere game is going to watch this and be yeah. like, "You're, you know, high school." And be like, I have a copy of that. Oh my god, that would be amazing. It's like, it like handwritten and typed. So. <laughs> Oh, I hope I'm going to have that hope for you. Tracy, how about for you? What's your writing journey been like? Oh, um, I always say I wanted to be a writer from the time I knew that letters made words and words made sentences. Uh, so, so the fact that I am one is, is not a surprise to anybody who, who knows me and knew me growing up. Uh, I actually went to school, got my graduate degrees in English and all that. I'd always planned on being a writer, but my mother, um, was very, very convincing when she told me that she would not support me when I was 40. So I had to have a career to fall back on. And, uh, I became an English professor and uh, I taught high school while I was I was working my way through my last degrees. And um, and anyway, it wasn't until I actually moved to Texas and I, I'm a Californian and uh, I had a premature child. And my um, do- my son's doctor had told me that if he, I could take a year off work and let him stay home out of out of daycare. Um, and let his lungs heal that, that we would be able to get rid of the asthma and everything else that he had. Well, that was a no brainer, of course. So I took a year off and I wrote what became my first two novels. I was very lucky. I got, um, I'd entered a Harlequin contest actually um, with um, both of them. And I won one and placed in the other. And uh, one was published by Harlequin um, and one ended up being published by Penguin at the time. One was a and one was more like family saga romance. Um, so two opposite ends of the spectrum, but that is that is how my career started. And I've kind of been publishing several, several novels a year ever since. YA to erotica. That's great. Sam, how about for you? What has your writing journey been like? Um, I think in the back of my head, I always wanted to do writing. Uh, but growing up, the biggest thing was storytelling. I was always telling what my teachers and mother lovingly referred to as what if stories, what if, (laughs) Um, which was great and wonderful. And everybody loved that imagination. They, however, did not like that. I would tell these stories before everybody else was done with their work. So, (laughs) 
that was always a problem. Uh, it wasn't actually until um, my best friend had a story idea that she wanted to work on with me that I actually started writing and discovered that, hey, I'm actually pretty good at this. <laughs> um, from there, it's just been trying to live the dream. Um, still kind of not quite where I would like to be, uh, but I did publish my first novel last year. I just ended up self-publishing it, decided I was too attached to the cover that I prematurely bought. <laughs> so I wasn't about to give that up. Um, and then I published the sequel in December. So that's awesome. Congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. And Regina, how has your writing journey been? Well, first, congratulations for that, uh, the novel. That's fantastic, your first one. Uh, my writing journey is totally different than the other ladies here. Um, I never wanted to be a writer. Never want, that wasn't even a dream of mine. I wasn't even much of a reader as a child. Um, I'm dyslexic, and my mother's native language wasn't English. And so I had a lot to, to hold me back as far as books. And people would talk about the joy of reading and escaping in a story. I never got it, never, ever, um, but I was always a storyteller. I always had, uh, I, I shared stories with friends. I always had a vivid imagination. I would have a crazy dream and I would share the story about it. And people were like, wow, you should write that down. That's fantastic. But um, the idea of being a writer when I wasn't really much of a reader seemed you know, impossible. And then when my son was in, um, I believe he had just started high school, one of the English teachers made a comment and she said, well, if you're not a reader, then you haven't found the right genre for you. And I thought, what if that's true? I mean, my gosh, I mean, I, I haven't read every genre out there. Maybe there is something special that I just haven't tapped into yet. So I've always loved romance stories and I've always loved paranormal romance, especially vampires. And so I stumbled across a book uh, with a vampire romance uh, story in it and I couldn't put it down. And I thought, whoa, wait a second, I'm reading? This was fantastic. And I went from zero books a year to over a, a book a week. And I just kept, it was like book candy. I couldn't get enough of it. And then I thought, well, what else am I holding myself back on? You know, there's got to be more out there. And I thought, could I write a book? You know, I thought maybe. And I thought about all the aspects of all the stories that I had recently read that I really enjoyed. And I, as a I'm a software developer. So I, I compiled a list. I did it logically. I, you know, I, I studied it, you know, all that. And I came up with this fantastic world and I wanted to explore it more. And then, uh, but I realized very quickly that I had no background in writing. So I signed up for every writing class and crafting class. And a year and a half later, you know, I'm, I'm taking all these classes and uh, it's been just over 10 years now. And I'm on my 18th novel. That's wonderful. So, that's yeah, awesome. it just, it went really quick and I self-published, I own my own publishing company, but it's been, it's been a fabulous journey. And I can't believe that I spent so much of my life not reading and writing. That is amazing. And that's, can I ask what, do you remember what that, uh, ro that vampire romance was back then that inspired you? Yes. Romance? yes. Um, I had a niece who kept telling me I had to read Twilight. I have to read Twilight. And I, I don't even really enjoy YA. Um, but she said, you have to read it. You have to read it. And I looked at the book and I thought it's like 400 pages. And this is like book one of four. It will take me forever. And being dyslexic and also having ADD, it's like, I, I can't read this much. It's, there's just no way. So I humored her. Uh, plus I was at an airport and I was trapped for eight hours. My flight had been delayed. And that was like the only book or anything in the, you know, the bookstore. And I thought, okay, I, I, I told her, I promised her I'd read it. And so uh, I read that in like a week and I thought there's got to be more. And I read all the series, like in, within two, three weeks, I had the whole series down and I thought, okay, but it's YA. I want something a little more, little, you know, a little spicier. And uh, that's when I discovered all that my favorite authors and just uh, went crazy. So that's amazing. Tracy, what, um, was there anything that inspired you in the writing of, of romance specifically? Oh yeah, no, we, my house is a lifelong romance reading house. My mother, um, read romances back when she lived in Detroit. Um, you couldn't get Harlequins in America. You had to cross over to Canada to get them. And she would cross over once a month and buy all the Harlequins and bring them home. So romance has been in my house, like long before I was born. And um, 
actually, I, I remember exactly. It was in fifth grade. Um, the YA section when I was younger is not was not what it is today. And every two Saturdays a month, my mother would pile me in the car and we would go to the bookstore um, back when B. Dalton was in the mall and um, and we would buy books. And so we went to B. Dalton and there was not a book in the YA section that I hadn't read. And there wasn't a book really in the classic section that I hadn't read that I wanted to read. And so I was kind of pouty and because I was a huge reader. I was a gigantic reader growing up. And um, I was really pouty and bratty <laughs> on the drive home because I had like no books for two weeks. What was I going to do? How was I going to survive? And uh, we got home and my mother was finally so annoyed. She took a book and I still remember it was Jude Devereaux's Velvet Promise. And she handed it to me and she said, why don't you try this? And I was like, really? And my dad was like, oh, Andy, don't get her started on the, on the romance novels. And I was like, well... I'll give it a shot. And well, from that moment on, I was, I was hooked. I mean, I read Nora Roberts in, in sixth grade and, and toured through everything she had, Jude Devereaux, Judith McNaught, Julie Garwood, you know, all of the, the old greats. And um, yeah. And I knew by the time I was in seventh grade that that's what I wanted to do. That's amazing. Sam, for you, how was the trip to romance? Um, different. <laughs> it was different. Um, I grew up devouring fantasy, a lot of times like dark fantasy, medieval fantasy. If fantasy was in it, I was there still, still to this day. One of my favorite series is Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time, mm. even though you could probably just toss the gate. You don't really need that one. <laughs> but that, that was my world. Um, and then it was a little bit my mom and a little bit of just desperately searching through the library for something that would catch my interest and I hadn't already read. <laughs> um, and I remember finding, I got a haul. My mom got tired of buying books because apparently I was going to break our house. <laughs> so she took me to the library the one time when I was asking for books. She even bought me a tote bag. She was like, there, you have an hour, go. <laughs> Come back with as many as you can stomach. And I would, I would fill that whole bag and I would read them all and we'd go back. Um, but I had picked out a wide variety, and one of them was this book called Bitten. Um, maybe not something. I should have read at 16, um, but I also couldn't figure out what was on the cover. But it was about werewolves, and I was in. <laughs> um, and then my father actually ended up reading it first, and that's where I got to learn the meaning of the word racy, because they were leaving for a date night, and so I had just taken it out. And goes, oh, you're going to really like that. That's a little bit racy, though. I was like, Okay. <laughs> right <laughs> he leaves less than a chapter later i'm like and i now know what racing means all right <laughs> so that definitely was was my foray into it um paranormal romance all all the way uh urban fantasy i do now have some contemporary things um but urban fantasy will always have my heart yeah I, I have a funny dad story too if you don't yeah. mind me jumping in I believe I was about, I think I was 14 or 15. I was in high school. And um, one of my honors teachers had assigned D.H. Lawrence's Lady Chatterley's Lover. And my dad saw me reading it. And he had made a comment to my mom, like, I don't know how I feel about her reading that. Isn't that kind of racy? Which must be a yeah. dad word. <laughs> and my mom kind of looked at him and said, you do know what she's been been reading since she was like right. 11 right <laughs> and he's um, like well what's in your romance novels and my mom was like never mind <laughs> <Not much. laughs> just, you, know. yes. you think they're just called oh. romance because they kiss like what no oh, I, I, have have so sweet. I have a funny yeah. dad story too um after i wrote my first book uh, my dad was very proud of me. He's like, oh, Gigi, you wrote a book. I, I want to read it. And there was a sex scene in my book. And I thought, my gosh, you know, here I, I was already in my 40s. I already had two kids. You know, I thought, well, I mean, it, can I let him read this chapter? You know, oh, my gosh, it's my dad. And so um, I own my own publishing company. And so I had published a one off copy of the first book in my series. And I took the entire chapter out of the book. And it was replaced with one sentence. They have sex. <laughs> and I printed it and I gave it to him. <laughs> he read it and he said, that was a great book. You really enjoyed the little bit of suspense that was in there and all the characters. And he said, 
Thank you for the chapter. That was short. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> And romance wow. has um, gives its readers just so many wonderful tropes. One of the things are um, like, what is your favorite and least favorite trope um, either to read or to write? So my favorite trope to read um, is probably, which is so weird, uh, but is probably um, like um, older man, younger woman. I just love, 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 love it. It's so hot. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Um, I also been liking some brother's best friend. As long as the brother is not like, stay away from my sister. Like, <laughs> I kind of like it if it's not like a kind of douchey brother. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like kind of a cool brother. Um, my least favorite is really, and it's so terrible because my favorite is older band younger woman <laughs> my least favorite is older woman younger band um Cougars. those are the ones that i don't uh tend to read at all to be honest um so i think um a few of my friends have written some and i've read those but usually i end up like ah, ah. Yes. <laughs> so that's probably Wait, my yes. least favorite that's why romance has something for everybody because there's all those things out there. So um, many and, tropes. <laughs> and along those lines, we're getting to what, you know, seeing so much more representation in romance these days, yeah. which is amazing. Sam, how about for you? What are your least favorite or favorite tropes? Yeah, always going to be a huge fan of enemies to lovers. I love that that tension. I just, I love it because there's such a thin line between love and hate and Oftentimes people crisscross it and have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> and it's awesome. I love that. Um, fake dating, I think is hilarious. I, I will always read one of those because it just cracks me up. Um, Grump and Sunshine, I think there's a theme here. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the soft for you. Um, on the flip side, I'm not really a fan of the whole secret baby trope. Um, mostly because I don't really see how babies are secret. That's pretty obvious. <laughs> Yeah. But um, and then stories where it's especially relevant on writing urban fantasy and paranormal romance, you run across a lot of uh, the alpha jerk where you're just like, that's not really somebody I want to take home. He just does not seem like a nice person. I don't know why. Why he's the winner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Somehow we love him. Tracy, what are your tropes? Oh, enemies to lovers by far is my favorite to read. It's my favorite to write. I love it. I love it. Um, with all the the tension and because there's such innate conflict already there, right? Um, I love that a lot because you can explore it. Same reason my second favorite trope, which is reunited lovers, right? Mm-hmm. Or broken up lovers, right? Lovers who tried once and and failed and are are trying, you know, again through whatever circumstances bring them back together. Because again, you have all that yummy conflict to uh, to pull from and all the the emotion. I love really, you know, writing really deep emotion. Um, um, as for the the trope that I have the hardest time writing is friends to lovers because I mean it's so because I love all that deep conflict right friends to lovers friends you there's not a lot of conflict there except oh one of one of us like loved the other secretly for whatever and so like how do you do that like how do you move like you know you need an inciting incident obviously something that that makes them like finally take the leap after however many years it's been but also um how do you navigate that and how do you how do you up the yummy sexual tension and and do all of those in realistic ways right mm-hmm. and so for me it just it always I've, I've i've written a few but it always just takes twice as long i think because i'm always like how do i get this tension right how do i get this conflict right so yeah for regina what are your tropes i like so many of them but uh i like the hidden not necessarily hidden billionaire, but where you believe someone might be something they're not, or you're um, unaware of certain aspects of who they are. Um, I really like fake relationships, fake boyfriend, fake fiance. Um, all of those are, are always a, a winner for me. Uh, friends to lovers, though, I, that's one of my favorites. Absolutely. Um, because I like the idea of two people who are already comfortable with each other, but they see each other in certain roles. And then there's that 
incident that happens. And all of a sudden there's a spark and maybe you go this way and it would be fantastic, but they have a lot to lose if it doesn't go that way and they want it to, but they don't know how the other, I, I just, I love that. Uh, it's, it's that tension of we're going to be throwing away so much to gain so much more if we can get it to work right. Um, love that. Uh, my least favorite, and it was hard for me to, to really think of this, but the one that uh, came to mind first uh, was enemies to lovers, which is interesting because of what the others have said. Uh, but for me, um, a writer really has to get it right because some, so many times they're enemies and one of them is an absolute jerk. And it's not believable that the other one would even be attracted to that person. And a lot of times uh, the enemies to lovers, it works out because they throw in another trope of close proximity. Oh, there, there's a snow, uh, uh, you know, something happens, there's a blizzard and they're trapped at a cabin. So they have to get along. And, you know, so it's always like tied with that other trope. And to me, sometimes it just seems like it's so cookie cutter and just repetitive that uh, that's my least favorite. Yeah. I mean, we've all like, there are so many and they all fit together in all that, the, the close proximity or like the one bed, like somehow <laughs> we're just stuck. This is, that's how it's going to be. Whoops. But I, and I just love it. And that's one of the things that draws me personally to romance is just how much there is out there and how much more we've gotten in the last, I mean, I remember all those Harlequins and some of those early books and a lot of the, um, the shirtless. I mean, we still get some really great shirtless covers, but we're getting a lot more out there too. So what is your favorite representation to see or to write in romance? I really love um, seeing strong uh, characters, definitely strong female characters. I've been, uh, uh, it's so funny, just yesterday I was like, God, I've never been a feminist. <laughs> um, but uh, Joanna Shoup, writes uh, these Gilded Age romances and some of her characters are such strong feminists in like 1890 and I'm like, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> and um, I love seeing people of color in different roles that, you know, we haven't learned about or that, cause you know, we see, or we've taught one, one way of history and we're like, okay, there was no black people in England and then now you come out and there, there was a lot of black people in England um, during the 1800s, black people everywhere. And it's like, just taking those, seeing those stories now is like amazing. And then um, even now, um, I actually just uh, signed up to be a part of the Regency in Color anthology. And the first book basically um, follows um an asian um descent um, so indian woman and um a white male but i'm like oh my god that's amazing when i read um the blurb i was like oh my god it sounds so good i, I like messaged the writer i was like look at you <laughs> uh and then because of bridgerton's now and the next story being um kate and um anthony and then kate is being as of um so they say Asian descent from India, though, um, which I had to, I read an article about it and I was like, oh. <laughs> um, so I'm like, this is, this is huge. So all these stories are coming out and being told and all these wonderful writers are like writing it. And um, I'm excited because my book Ford does follow a um, African-American couple. So I'm like, oh my God, this, <laughs> but in Regency England, and then I do have the um, Regency of Color um, book coming out in September. Uh, that is amazing. We will definitely look for that. Like My favorite representation in romance. Um, can you be a little more specific in what you're asking? So in the um, idea of more than just the female and male and they are in one of these sets and they are there we're getting you know i'm more in i've read a few where it is like we don't meet in any of the traditional ways we're pulling more from from the oh. online world from from other perspectives um other nationalities even i've read mm -hmm. some amazing that weren't just, you know, that cookie cutter on the cover kind of churned out that they've really shown 
all the love there is out there and all the different kinds. I mean, even using supernatural twists, but it being more beyond just. Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, with supernatural, let me take it from that aspect of it. Um, with supernatural, you now are seeing beings like dragons and other magical beings that uh, not necessarily prey upon humans, but um, you know, if they want to, they could blink and these humans could die or, or just disappear. And for a human or anyone to, to love a being or a creature that is so opposite, so different, so even borderline dangerous for um, something that you're not, you've never been exposed to, to actually put aside not just your differences, but your beliefs or to open your heart so fully to something so foreign. Um, you know, paranormal and the supernatural has really opened those floodgates for a variety of different characters out there that you never would have seen, you know, even just 10 years ago or 20 years ago, definitely not when I was little. Um, and the idea that you can see someone for who they are, and it doesn't matter what shape, color, size, or whatever they are, it's for who they are on the inside. And I think that's what we're seeing a lot of these days, where it's not necessarily what the package looks like. In fact, I've read a lot of stories recently where I have to actually look back in the book and, and search and say, how old is this character? Because, you know, I, I'm not really sure the, the, the author is not telling me a specific age or in my mind's eye, I see them, maybe the, the main character is having brown hair or whatever. And then I realize they never describe the character. They're allowing me to interpret how I see these characters. And I think they were getting more and more of that, which is, I think, fascinating and just, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. it really is. Sam, for you, what, um, what are your favorite representations to see or to write in romance? Yeah, you know where I'm going with this. Um, I absolutely adore writing MM and reading MM. Like, I don't know what happened. I fell down a rabbit hole like a couple of years ago. And let me tell you what, <laughs> I consumed so many books in such a short amount of time. I was like, I had, I had to make up for lost time. Um, I actually have my first uh, paranormal uh, romance mm coming out this summer um i'm very excited for that doing all of the work with it um these guys they're my babies like absolutely love them to pieces um i love mixing up nationalities race skin tone you name it that's where i'm going with it um and exactly what regina said with supernatural really giving you a way to add an additional lens and put a focus on things that otherwise people are like, oh, I'm too uncomfortable. I don't really want to talk about that. But that was the purpose of fantasy, supernatural, to be able to address these things in a way that people would accidentally start thinking about it. <laughs> and and that's that's perfect. That's, that's why I do it. Yeah, opening hearts and eyes. Tracy, um, what representations are your favorite to write or to read? Um, I really like... Um, I really like books that reflect the world that we live in. You know, I like books that are all mixed up. I love ensemble cast. It's, it's what I, I love to read. It's what I love to write. Um, it's what I love to, to teach about. I teach classes on it um, pretty regularly. And um, like in the Crave universe, I've created a world that has um characters from you know obviously all kinds of paranormal walks of life and from all kinds of nationalities and races and all kinds of of sexual orientations as well because I think I think I don't know I love it when art reflects life and when you have this this cast that that everybody can find themselves in you know what I mean? Everybody can find somebody in this this book that they relate to and and that they they either want to be or that reminds them of them or that that gives them hope. You know, I get I get letters from from readers, so many readers around the world all the time telling me that the Crave series, you know, that's something that one character in this book just, you know, meant everything to them and, and really um help them out of a tough spot or made them, you know, think that, oh, things were going to be okay or, or how much they enjoyed seeing, you know, um, 
whether it's Grace's really curly hair and big boobs, you know, because not a lot of heroines have those, or whether it was, um, you know, Flint, Flint's sexual orientation, or, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different things that happen um, and uh, a lot of different people. And, and I, I just, I like that. I love reading books that, that Casey McQuiston, I don't know if you read um, One Last Stop, um, which is her second book. Um, I loved it. I loved the diversity of the characters in that book and, and her ensemble cast was just so right on, right? Just, freaking brilliant and um and yeah those are the kind of books i love to read that are just you know it's it's just it's not a big deal it's just this is who i am and this is who this person is and this is who my best friend is and isn't that great and we're all just Mm -hmm. living our lives and and i think that's amazing so um what other genres have you written or would you want to try out writing in other than romance oh other than romance i really um, I really love, well, I think it would always have a romance element because uh, I, I got some kind of shield up that if it doesn't have a romance, I'm kind of like, nope. <laughs> um, so I really love like fantasy and sci-fi, like love, love, love that. I love werewolves, but they made for life. So it's romance. <laughs> so I love werewolves. Um so fantasy werewolves, <laughs> like werewolves. I actually have a werewolf story. I'm like werewolves, because <laughs> uh, werewolves and Regency has always been my like my guilty pleasures. The ones that I just gotta read. I gotta read. Um, and then I ended up writing Regency. But yeah, um, and I always look at mystery. You know, I do look at it, but it would have to be a romance. <laughs> Uh, and I love mob stories, but again, that has a romance. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, you've been mentioning authors throughout. Um, are there any other authors that inspire you that you want to mention? Um, I love, love, love Lisa Klepis. <laughs> love Lisa Klepis. Uh, like borderline obsessed um Vanessa Riley is crazy amazing black author um with all these wonderful titles out right now Island Queen oh my god I love I love Julia Quinn but um and Bridgerton's and just going through that like crazy even though the Duke really upset me with his little uh not want to have kids thing Um, I, I love so many writers right now. I am sort of obsessed <laughs> with this new writer I discovered, um, called Eliza Braden. Oh my God. She's phenomenal. Yeah. All right. She, um, she has one, se- she's fairly new. She has one series out. Um, the, what is it? All my stuff is a uh, digital. It's, um, some scandalous season or season or something. The one of them is um, the Duke of Sin. Ooh. Is it the Duke of Sin or the Marquis of Sin? Somebody of Sin. <laughs> and uh, one is the one. And what I love is when a uh, when a girl loves an earl. So all these wonderful titles. I'm obsessed with her right now. <laughs> um, so much. I'm like, I had to take a step back because I gotta write. I'm like, I, I, I can't read anymore. And he likes Braden. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, but um, I read a lot of people, and I'm, I'm constantly buying books, and I'm I have no attention span, so I am buying the book and the audio book. No, so I <laughs> yeah, you listen. I'm, I'm I'm sure some writer is like, who's buying all this stuff? <laughs> it's like me. <laughs> Um, so, cause I love audio books. I just love audio books. So yeah, um, a lot of great writers out there now. The Regency of Color Girls are crazy. So I'm excited to be with them. Um, <laughs> I would definitely tell our, um, cataloging librarian that, that we need to get that one for sure. She's been amazing at adding to our collection. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. They're- there's going to be a book come out. So we're not going to do this one big anthology. We're each going to publish a book a month. So from March 
to November, I believe, there's going to be a new book of Regency in Color every day. Awesome. Uh, so that'd be really exciting. You got so many crazy good authors. Uh, G.S. Carr, who uh, she writes Civil War usually, um, and Regency. So I think she has two uh, pen names. Um, Rebecca Austin, um, uh, Mary Farmer. Got so many crazy big names. Lisa Rains. I'm like, this is this is exciting. I gotta like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got this. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is that is really amazing. I mean, to be honest, all of the genres that I've written in are romance. Um, they're all the different genres of romance, subgenres of romance, but, but they're all romance. I've written erotica. I've written erotic suspense. I've written urban fantasy with with a romance twist. We had I had a central couple um, in my urban fantasy. Um, young adult, which I love. Um, women's fiction, but again, with, with a romantic bent. Um Contemporary romance, paranormal romance, yeah, they, like it, it all has romance in it. I'm, I'm a big sucker for, a, for a happily ever after. As for um, what genre I haven't written that I, uh, that I would like to, I have a thriller idea, and I've had it for, for a while, and it just keeps running around in the back of my head. So, uh, so maybe, maybe a thriller. Yeah. There is precedent, Alyssa Cole. Um, oh, there's a, there's Miller several, movie. right? Romance novels, yeah, yeah. Done, or romance a novels done really an amazing job. Regina, for you, what other um, genres have you written in, or would you want to write in? Uh, well, I did write a, uh, a not necessarily fantasy. It was like a alternate universe. It takes place in the future. Um, it's about someone whose job it is to go back in time and take pictures and videos of historic events. And something goes wrong, and then all of a sudden the world he lives in has drastically changed, and he has to go fix it type stuff. So alternate universe, um, that was so much fun to write. Really had a great time at it. Uh, wrote a short story that was uh, uh, a story that happened before the actual novel. Um, and then I have a, another story I want to write. Uh, the story that I wrote was about Lincoln signing the Emancipation Proclamation. And they're getting messed up and slavery continuing and Abraham Lincoln was a war criminal and blah, blah, blah. I mean, the, the Confederate States of America. Uh, and so I, I really enjoyed the president, um, President Lincoln and his time frame, the 1860s, the conflict he had to go through, the hardships and what he, he really had to face, the frustrations, and the struggles. And I wanted that to come alive in my book. And what if you know, it was that question, what if this happened? And so I want to do a, another book in the series about Camelot and, and uh, Kennedy and what would happen, you know, if something goes wrong with that. Uh, and that wasn't a romance. That was a true, you know, alternate universe kind of fantasy or sci-fi ish type of thing. Um, another genre that I'm really interested in writing but have not yet uh, is mystery. Um, a lot of my books are very suspenseful because I do write about a covert team of sexy vampires who protect the president. That's one of my series. And uh, the suspenseful part of it is really intriguing to me. And I'd love to get my hands onto a good story involving uh, me, um, you know, some type of mystery. And I'm thinking in the back of my mind, uh, like that show Castle, but with vampires and include the, my world that I've created uh, with the vampires and, and just kind of continue it, you, you know, kind of like a companion piece that kind of fits into my world, but it's not romance. It's something, you know, for a different audience. Oh, I bet your fans will love that. Sam, how about for you? What are the other genres that you're interested in trying on and or have already? Yeah. Well, I have, so I have the, the paranormal romance and the urban fantasy, which depending on which book you're looking at, they're interchangeable. Um, and then I have, contemporary things that I've done under a pen name. And I have the beginnings of what would be more of a, a fantasy, like an actual fantasy story, not leaning so much on an existing world, more having to create everything from scratch. Um, I have had that concept for a while, very similar to the, the thriller idea, just, just buzzing around, going, going. Um, and I started it and then I kind of abandoned it because it scared me. <laughs> Like, I don't know if I can do this, <laughs> but, and there, there would be romance in that as well, but it's less about the romance and more about the, the magical system and a curse that's been put on a land and, and things of that nature instead. Nice. 
Well, so we've been talking, it looks like for about a half hour. So I'm going to ask um, some questions to each of you specifically, then we'll do a couple more um, and we will kind of close us out, try to keep it right around an hour. So yeah. your books to date have been historicals, but with your westward move, um, what inspirations or story ideas um, has the change of scenery to Texas kind of given you from New York? Hmm. Maybe definitely different. gives me a lot of small town feels sometimes because um, there's a lot of times I drive from Austin to Louisiana because uh, that's where my in-laws live. And so when you go and when you go through um, that little route up 79, you hit all these small towns. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm obsessed with population. <laughs> so every time we flash one, I'm like, what's the population? Uh, it's like population 2000. <laughs> population 700. I'm like, they all know each other. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, so it definitely gives me a lot of small town fields, uh, feels. And, um, like first love feels because I'm like if somebody lives in a small town they have to be with the same person for like ever <laughs> right right um, you know another one of my favorite tropes which moving to Texas and like really I love um, is like mail order brides <laughs> That little prize. Um, so yeah, so all those ideas all the time. I did have a story that I was gonna publish and then I stopped. But when I first moved here, um, it's pretty much done. Um, but it's a, a ranching story. <laughs> and I had and I was publishing it when I first moved here, and then I kind of put it on the side because it's just really super sweet. <laughs> super sweet. And steamy, of course, but and super sweet. <laughs> Maybe we get back to it. So, um, Sam, since you were just mentioning, one of your blog posts actually talks about how you plan on releasing four books in 2022. How do you juggle multiple releases in a year? Are those projects still in process or are they basically completed? That's a little bit of both. Um, I will say that I do my best, uh, as I said in my blog post, to have a little bit of a grace so if it turns out the timelines are not working out, I will absolutely cut somebody. Um, one of them for, for sure can't be cut as part of a collaborative series on the contemporary side under my, my pen name, Lauren Edwards. Um, so that that's happening. <laughs> Whether I, unless I pull out of the project, that's happening. Um, and then my, my big goal is to get my, my MM Paranormal Romance out uh, this summer. So those, those are my biggest drives. And then past that, I have another contemporary piece that I'm wanting to put out later this year, again, under the pen name. Um, and then a story that I have 50,000 words of, and I hate half of them. <laughs> so I get to fix that to publish at the end of the year, assuming I can actually pull it off. So two of the, two of the things are, I guess three of the things, two of them were ready, pretty much. We're just going through edit passes and shining a few things. Um, one of them I finished writing earlier this year. And then that last, that last one with the words that I hate, um, we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll be pull it for you. Um, so actually I want to go to Tracy. So I saw you have a manga edition of one of your titles. What was that process like and how, how involved were you in that adaption? To be honest, absolutely not involved at all. <laughs> um it's it's one of my harlequins and actually my agent found it when she was on amazon looking for, <laughs> looking no. for something else she's like are you where you have a manga and i'm like what i have a manga this is a my, my kids are big manga anime fans and i was like and, and so mine i was like oh my god really it's the coolest thing ever but yeah no not involved at all sadly oh. Well, wow, that's still really cool. I've noticed more and more of them. We were adding to our adult uh, manga collection here at the Pflugerville Library. And so those Harlequins are something I'm going to be looking at, seeing if we can't add into our collection as well. Um, so for Regina, another version, there seems to be more and more romance titles being released in audio. Several of your titles are available in audio. Was that something you planned on? And how was that process for you? Um, it wasn't something I had uh, planned or, or necessarily, you know, had to do. 
Um, but I have all these novels out now and there, there's no reason not to try a different medium. Uh, I, I found a really great voice talent, uh, J. Bruce McRell, and he's, he's done the majority of my novels. And, uh, you know, there's so many people out there who, for some reason or other, they enjoy the audio side of it. You know, um, there, there's e even people who, uh, you know, are blind. They, they need the books read to them. And I don't personally enjoy having people read books to me, but I did get an, audi uh, an audible account. And I have to admit, I'm kind of hooked on it now. I really do enjoy it. If you're driving long distances, I mean, it's great. You get to, you know, like I said earlier, I came to the, the game late. I wasn't a reader as a kid. I have all these books that I want to, I, I'm playing catch up all the time. So having something, you know, running in, in my headset is, is just fantastic. Um, and I think that if you are an author, there's no reason not to seek out different mediums. There's nothing that says you can't even translate your books. I'm having my first series now translated into Spanish. And it's just a way to reach more people and to share your written word with people out there who may never have heard of you or who, who don't pick up a book and read it. I mean, that's why we all went to ebooks because people enjoy ebooks and they don't necessarily want to have bookcases filled with books anymore. You know, it's just a way of, of helping out your fans be able to get to your material. And actually the other question I had pulled for you, I think you already pretty much covered in your bio. You mentioned that book that ignited a deeper need for more. And I wondered what book that is, but now I think I can guess. I, I don't think you can, life. but I'm going to let you, I know what you're going to say, but it's not that. It's not that. Who's going tell me? No, that's what, what I want to know. Is it Twilight? No, no. What is it? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. It's 50 shades of gray. Yeah. Well, see, I can see, isn't that one that came in the same- My life fan fiction. That's the so other I, part of that. So joining that fandom, it really supported you on your own journey. Oh my God. Oh, That's Margaret, amazing. I got to tell you, I one day I was at work on my lunch break. I'm going to say lunch break, but reading Fifty Chase of Grey in the kitchen. And I was sitting with my friend, uh, Adam. And I said, oh, Adam, he really reads like Edward Cullen. <laughs> And Adam goes, well, Cece, you know, it's fan fiction. And I was like, what? <laughs> What's that? And then I go down this rabbit hole. And then I found this entire world of these crazy, amazing women who now are like all my really, really, really close friends. You know, now it's like there's no real life friends and Twilight friends. Like these are my best friends. I've been friends with these women since like 2008. 2009 um my sister i met her at twilight uh, my beta readers you know because i go to the i go to the meetups we have meetups every year <laughs> we had one in austin last year this year is going to be in cleveland so um we meet up every year and then you know there's smaller meetups i just came back from dallas because my beta readers uh, one flew down from Ohio and we met up at our other one's uh, house and just had a whole weekend, a whole girls weekend. So it definitely has changed my life because I met all these wonderful people and I published and they're so supportive, so supportive. Uh, everybody's like, how do you sell so many of your first copies? And I told this one girl, this one girl, I said, I said, I really think it must be the Twilight fandom. <laughs> I was like, Nate crazy supportive they crazy supportive and um just so wonderful with everything it just it just i'm just so lucky because i'm like these are all my friends i met all these wonderful people and i'm so social so i every time there's a meetup i go and then you know when COVID came we'd be on zoom and i'd be at a zoom uh around work <laughs> mm -hmm. i might have work people looking too so i have to say around because <laughs> i gave the link to everybody <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome let's talk about what books you're currently reading um so uh sam what's a book currently on the top of your to be read pile uh actually the become is literally on the top um karma kelly's kiss of the fallen mm -hmm. i got my hands on a paperback copy and that that cover has just been torturing me i love it so much i just want to like frame it oh <laughs> So that's definitely been on my list to read just as soon as I have enough spins. <laughs> Tracy, how about for you? What's on? What's a book? Um, 
Christine Feehan, queen of the vampire romance, just wrote her first romantic suspense. I wrote her first thriller type book. Uh, so I picked that up and I, I have that in my home. My to be read pile is ridiculously large at this point. I mean, I know most of ours are, but mine is embarrassingly large. And um, Cloud Cuckoo Land, which is another book that everybody's talking about. And uh, a bunch of different YAs as well are, are, are on there. Um, Chloe Gong's new one and um, a couple others. So yeah, I'll awesome. Christine V had first because I've been really looking forward to it. It's been my, I promised myself it was my reward when I finished this book I'm working on now. That is an excellent reward. Regina, how about for you? What's um, something that you have either to listen or to read? All right. It's embarrassing how long, how big this uh, to be read pile is. And it's filled with old, old books because like I said, I, I didn't read um, when they first came out. So at the top is Outlander by Diana, and I'm going to screw up her last name. Gal- 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 Don, yes, yeah. thank you. I have four copies of this book that I have collected over like 10 years. And every time someone's like, oh, you you love romances and you love the time travel and and here, read this book. And I keep getting copies of it. And I've seen the show, love the show. And so that actually I have it on Audible now too. So there's no excuse at this point. I have got to read it. And that's number one. But number two is a series. And I'll admit to you ladies, uh, I have not read the Harry Potter series. I haven't even watched the movies. I saw, I think the first movie. And so everyone says, you've got to be kidding me. Of course you, you, you read this. This is a fantastic series. Everyone's read it. And it's like, well, I haven't. And when people talk about, or especially not, not so much anymore, but in the past, you know, I would just pretend or, or leave the room because I haven't read it and I didn't want to be spoiled, you know, not, you know, spoilers on it. But yes, I, that is on the list. And I have all of that on Audible now. So there's no excuse. Audiobooks are great. I mean, I tend to read fast, but like I know for us in our overdrive, those books, you can actually listen to a little bit faster or a little bit slower to set your own pace. So, you know, I tend towards the faster end and I can like get through, you know, an 11 hour book in a little bit less than that. And it, it yeah, I I do two times the speed. Yeah. I, I always crank it at two times the speed. It's bearable. And, and after a while, your brain just is there. It's great. Yeah. Um, so how about um, you guys have all mentioned some other authors, but who's an author that inspires you? Um, Regina, let's start with you. Uh, Carolyn Sparks uh, is one of my all time favorites and uh, J.R. Ward. Uh, she's really, I, I think, just so out there and she, she can be very aggressive in her writing and um, her style. Um, uh, Lindsay Sands is also one of my favorites. And I have, I've read their entire book series and, and just, I keep waiting for the next one to come out. I, like I said earlier, it's book candy. You just have to have it. Mm-hmm. Yes, I agree. Especially with the Carolyn. Um, she was on our romance readers panel last year and I had to, okay, I got this. It's so much fun. Sam, how about for you? What's an author that really um, inspires you? Yeah, well, I mentioned um, getting getting into the romance and paranormal romance side of things. Uh, was Kelly Armstrong um, devoured all the books she had at the time. Um, from there, I've really fallen in love with uh, Haley Edwards. She her Soulbound series is amazing. So great how she's twisted in so many different cultures and deities and perspectives. It's amazing. I love it. Um, kind of more on the contemporary side, I'm. Lo- anything Lucy Lennox writes, I'm there. I'm there. Um, Annabeth Albert is also amazing. She was actually my mentor um, two years ago, so that was pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. And then Riley Hart. So awesome, Tracy. How about for you? What authors do you have? For um, Nalini Singh is always my go-to paranormal um, writer. I adore her as a person. I adore her books. I just think she is absolutely phenomenal. Um, Christine Feehan, um, who I also adore as a person and whose books I love very much. Um, I had a couple other names, but my mind went blank. Um, Lauren Dane, who writes um, a lot of paranormal, but also some really great contemporaries. One of my favorite series ever is her Brown Family series. Um, it's my go-to comfort read um, regularly. 
Um, and honestly, um, I just love the hell out of Casey McQuiston's voice. I think, I think it's brilliant. And, uh, and I love her stuff too. I'm, I'm, I know her second book just came out and I am anxiously, anxiously awaiting her third. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, I kissed Sarah Wheeler. I saw the advanced reader copies go, go by on that. And I, Oh, sometimes it's hard. I get all these advanced copies, but then I, you know, sometimes I want to wait till the very end. You know, it just, it just depends where I'm at, but you're right. There are some of those where I, I got to kind of go right to them when they come out. Um, so all of your bios mentioned your dogs. Um, who has been your favorite companion um, animal that you've included in a story? Or maybe if you haven't quite yet, have you thought of including a companion animal in your one of your stories? I rarely write about animals, I must tell you. Yeah. I really do, don't write about them that much. Um, in book two, Ruined, I... I did have two dogs in there um, based on my friend's um, parents' dogs, Happy and Sunny, uh, and they were the cutest little dogs. <laughs> so I put them in book two, uh, but usually I don't ever have dogs. Um, I guess I have one in the fan fiction ones, and now in th this next book, there's a cat. Um, and the name one, so I had a list of names. Look, I was all for, cause she's a, she's a chemist. She loves everything chemistry. So I was all for nitrogen. <laughs> I was like, yes, <laughs> nitrogen. My beta readers, my two uh, very good friends, Cheryl and Pamela was like, CC, no. <laughs> and I was like, it's so good. And then Cheryl was like, what about Beaker? And I was like, no. And I was being really ridiculous, like, no, I don't like it. <laughs> so I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? Just in case I'm being ridiculous, what I'm gonna do is take it to the newsletter. Let let them do it. I'm gonna let them do it. Uh, so then I'm like, and I'm gonna add Beaker and I'm gonna add nitrogen. And what else did I add? Um, cobalt, I had a few on there. And then I let people choose. And then a lot of people was like, Madam Curry, but that's 1865 and I'm 1824. Really? Might be 65, but somewhere later, later. And then one person was like, what about Newton? And I was like, oh, I don't mind Newton. So I put Beaker in for a previous cat when she was little, because we do start the story and when they're kind of younger and then we go jump uh, to the future or to the present. Uh, and then I put Newton as the companion now. Um, but yeah, usually I don't write too much about cats and stuff. Uh, kids a little bit more, a little bit more than kids. But I like free single people that don't have to feed and walk their dog. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Sam, how about you? I, ironically enough, only have one story, um, not published yet, um, but it is done, um, that has a cat and a dog because it's the two love interests. Um, but the cat... We, I just laid heavily into myth and lore and all of that. Uh, the cat is actually a skunk cat, and it was the kind of cat that pulled Freya's chariot. And so my my witch is is who it is. This skunk cat is is their familiar and is way more than any regular cat should be. It's bigger. It will probably age as long as they do. It'll be there forever. It can hold their magic. Um, and so he does all these crazy things and that cat's personality is awesome. Like I have scenes where he's just talking to his cat <laughs> and the cat just snarks right back. Like all the attitude doesn't actually use words. So he's like filling in the blanks like we do for our pets. Mm -hmm. And it's just hilarious. And all of the beta readers that I've had read it are, are just floored by the cat. That's awesome. Cat steals the show. <laughs> Yes, Tracy, have you had any animal companions in your book? Uh, do uh, dragon and werewolf shifters count? Yes. <laughs> because I realized I don't think I've ever written, I don't think I've ever written a pet in oh. any of my, uh, I don't think I've ever written a pet in any of my books. 67 books now, and I've never had a pet. That's so interesting. Um I don't know why. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with the Dragon Shifters in the Grave series. I'm very fond of them. 
That's awesome. Uh, Regina, how about for you? Have you had any um, pets or animal companions in your? Oh, absolutely. I have 18 books out and I want to say half of them have pets involved. Uh, I had a dog and I'm actually allergic to cats. Mm -hmm. So um, all of my, uh, my stories involve puppies or dogs. And uh, my, the very first book I ever wrote, it's in my colony series. I put my dog Gracie in there and little Sheltie, I had her for 15 years. And so Mm -hmm. she absolutely made an appearance in that book. And then in my, uh, another series, I have rich indulgent series. Um, uh, It's not a vampire series. It's about rich billionaires, but this billionaire has two puppies and they're my current dogs, uh, Oreo, um, Oreo cookie and ginger snap. Um, So they're, they made a debut in there as well. And then um, a lot of my friends have dogs. And so one, one dog Brownie was the center of attention and it stole a scene in one of my other novels and in a lot of other ones have, have appeared. But one of my short stories um, is called More Than Puppy Love. And it is about a dog, a veterinary uh, person, um, a, a lady who uh, takes care of her dogs. And she actually goes to a reunion and sees one of her patients being abused at her high school reunion. And so that dog had, they just stole the whole show. It was about him. And so, yeah, I mean, pets are so much a part of our lives, honestly. So I know my little girl's downstairs waiting for me to go cuddle with her right now. So, uh, yeah, I just make sure to incorporate it because it's, it's part of who I am. And so it's part of the characters that I create and they always have to have a pet or something. So I'm going to end on this last question. Um, just something to bring us up. What is something that is bringing you joy these days? Tracy, let's start with you. Honestly, um, my puppies, we got two, uh, two Yorkie puppies, Loki and Oscar. Um, my boys named them and, uh, they are the cutest, tiniest little balls of fur in the history of the world. And my boys are giants. They're all like well over six feet. And it's so funny because you just see them. They just love these tiny little puppies so much and they just carry them around. And, uh, yeah, they bring me a lot of joy. Yorkie. And my fans, my, my fans are bringing me a lot of joy as well. I have, I have, I always say I have the most amazing fans in the world and um, their letters that I get and everything are, are bringing me a lot of joy these days. Yeah. Regina, what's something for you right now that's bringing you joy? My family, for sure. Um, I, I have two children. I'm, I'm an empty nester and my two children now both live in Austin. And so I get to see them all the time. They're always over every week. And um, my husband, I've been married for 26 years, uh, love of my life. Uh, But I also have a brother here in town. And uh, my sister just moved back to, uh, well, Leander, but the Austin area. So um, just a lot of family. And uh, we've we've had a lot of losses this year in my family. So we're really rallying together and enjoying, you know, the people who are here right now and enjoying the time we have. Sam, what's something for you that's been bringing you joy? Well, it doesn't sound half as exciting as all of that. (laughs) Um, My mother lives next door, so I get to see her all the time. Um, My husband and I don't have children yet, um, but we do get to snuggle with our dogs who are very needy um, for affection all the time. It cracks us up. Um, One of our dogs, uh, Darcy. Yes, Mr. Darcy and Lizzie Bennett are my dogs. (laughs) He has this big thing where if one of us is loving on, on him, he will look at the other and be like, well, because he wants both at the same time. Um, but the, the biggest joy, honestly, is getting to work on, on this MM story. Um, it's so near and dear to my heart. It's the first one I ever wrote. It completely captivated me. It's going to end up being three books. I may, my friends joke, because they're like, anytime I'm feeling down, they'll be like, are you reading Darkness to Find Again? And I'm like, no closes the book (laughs) no i have not read my own book that i wrote six times it just it just brings it brings me joy it makes me feel better i just love to read i love tv (laughs) i love watching shows and stuff um and i love my one friend says you are in a better mood when you're social (laughs) and um I like being social. I like being, I do like being social. I like going out. I like, uh, very social, but you know, it's COVID, COVID's real. So I don't go out that much, but I don't stay home that much either, but <laughs> so maybe twice a month. 
but then I'm always on the Zoom or something. Um, so that stuff brings me joy. Um, my niece and nephews are really little and they're around me a lot now. Um, so they bring me joy. My son, even though he's so serious and he's 15, I've been teaching him how to drive and that really has been cheering me up even though he gets a little grumpy at me. Um, but now I learned to like, we go around once together and then I get out, me and the dog gets out the car and then we just watch him. And he's like, I feel much better by myself. And I was like, oh good. <laughs> Tell us what the next thing we can look for from you is. So Tracy, I know you've got something good coming up. What what's the next thing we're looking for? Uh, actually, I have a copy right here, which is very exciting. One of the only ones that uh, that are out in the world yet. I have Court, um, which is the fourth book in the Grave series, uh, coming out February first, and so I'm gearing up for all the the events and everything that come with that. Awesome, Sam. Um, what's the first thing coming out that from you that we can look for? First thing coming out for me is going to be Darkness Defined, which will be the first book in the War on Darkness series. Um, that is my MM story, and it follows uh, two shadow demons, which we don't get a lot of demons and things, and they're in college. <laughs> and they were roommates. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. We were talking about tropes. There it is. And there it is. Roommates. We love it. Regina, what's, yeah. what are we looking for from you? Uh, the first thing is Bachelor Soul. That's a, a new novel. That is the book two in my Rich Indulgence series. That is coming out February 4th, whatever that first Tuesday is in February. I think it's February 4th. And then the second thing coming out is my second book in my Colony series, my Paranormal Vampire series. That one is coming out in Spanish. That is I want to say it's coming out in the next two months. I need to check the date. Um, not really aware of that. I have to, I don't have my calendar in front of me. And then uh, later this year, the third book in my Colony World series is coming out. And that will be, it's going to the editor in August. So I want to say it's coming out in November. And looking forward to, for me, is I got to finish this series, the Bachelor uh, series, um, so we got, um, three more books left, um, book, but three, four and five, um, all couples that we've seen in book one and two. So this is going to be really exciting getting that done and out. And then can't believe I signed up for the Regency of Color Anthology and which comes out, my part comes out in September. So that's going to be crazy exciting. And, um, I'm always, I'm like, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, writing black stories and just seeing what kind of spin I put, I can put on it. Um, which is funny because I introduce a character in the next book that is kind of loosely based off, off my mother and her like, her like life. And, you know, she grew up by, you know, she, from Detroit, grew up by herself, ran for, away from home, which is like 13. Uh, so loosely based, loosely based, but in Regency, England. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, lots of stuff. Just got to get these fingers moving. Yep. <laughs> We're wishing you well for it. We can't wait for it. Well, we look forward to all of this from you guys. And thank you everyone for watching.